Very good morning, dear students. Today I shall take up a chapter on the central banking. It's a very detailed chapter, but still I'll summarize the whole thing for the sake of your studies during the examination. Okay, exactly the central bank. See, according to Professor Bill Rogers, okay, central banking is one of the three great inventions that are taking place in this world, the other two being the fire and the wheel. No, there is practically no country in the world today which does not have a central bank. The banking system of a country without a central bank at the top is like a human body without a head. Or the activities of the financial institutions of a country, a central bank stands as a presiding deity, it's like a goddess. The relationship between the central bank and the commercial banks can be well compared to the sun in the solar system or a central pole in a tent. Okay? The central bank is the undisputed leader of the money market and capital market of every country. It is the topmost financial institution okay, in every country. Every country has a central bank. The bank system of a country without a central bank at the top is like a human body without a head. The central bank of the United Kingdom is called Bank of England. The central bank of the United States of America is called the Federal Reserve System. The actual you know, Federal Reserve Banks which make up the central bank of the USA. Okay? Then the central bank of UAE is the UAE central bank. In India, there's the Reserve Bank of India. Okay? In Pakistan, the State Bank of Pakistan. Likewise, every country has a central bank, which is the topmost financial institution in the country. Okay? Without a central bank, no banking system can function, no economy can function. Now, let us discuss about the significance and the functions of a central bank. All over the world, central banks perform a variety of functions. A central bank is a topmost financial organization or financial institution which is chartered by the central government to regulate, to manage and control the expansion and contraction of money and credit for satisfying the general welfare of society and the national economic interest. Such an institution is called a central bank. Okay? So a central bank performs a variety of functions. One of the important functions of central bank is issuing currency notes for note issue. Note issue is one of the most important functions of central banks. Okay? In every country, central bank has the exclusive privilege to issue currency notes. In Bank of England, in, in, in England and Wales, the British pound sterling is issued by only the Bank of England. In the United States of America, the dollar bills or the green bank is issued by the Federal Reserve System in the USA. In the UAE, the UAE drums is issued only by the UAE Central Bank. In India, the Indian rupee is issued by only the Reserve Bank of India. In Pakistan, the Pakistan rupee is issued by the State Bank of Pakistan. So in every country, it is the exclusive privilege of a central bank to issue currency notes. The central bank has the monopoly power of issuing currency notes. No other commercial banks or financial institutions can issue currency notes. Why the central bank is given this power? To have uniformity okay, for the currency, okay, stability in the value of currency, to improve the public confidence, and also to achieve elasticity in the supply of credit, a supply of money and credit. That's why the central bank is given this power. According to Barra Smith, okay, the function of note issue, the monopoly power of note issue of the central bank is the most important function of central banks in modern times. Then comes the second function. The central bank also acts as the banker, the agent and the financial advisor to the government. In modern times, the central bank acts as the agent of the you know, central government by receiving payments on behalf of the government and making payments on behalf of the government. Also, give them short-term loans whenever they're having different requirements. Okay. Also, represent them in the International Monetary Fund, World Bank, United Nations, and other international agencies. And the central bank is always acting as an agent for and on behalf of the government, central government. Again, it is also okay. Not only an agent, it is also a financial advisor. It advises the government on various economic matters and policy matters. Okay. Advises the central government on. Okay, the monetary policy as well as the fiscal policy, all these advices are given by the central bank. It is also an agent and the banker to the you know, central government because it does all banking functions for and on behalf of the central government and it also helps the central government in times of financial difficulties and problems. So the central bank is the banker, okay, agent and the financial advisor to the governments in modern times. The third important function of the central bank is called banker's bank. You know? The central bank is the bank which controls, regulates and manages the activities of all the commercial banks in the country. It is the leader of the money market, 
It is undisputed leader of the banking system. So it manages the financial affairs of the bank. All the inter bank transactions are settled through, settled by, and central bank acts as the bankers' bank because whenever commercial banks need any assistance, central bank is always there to support them and control them, regulate them, and guide them in needs. Acting as a lender of the last resort, the fourth function and the importance, the central bank, you know, is always at the disposal of commercial banks in times of financial crisis or emergencies or difficulties. And when the commercial banks have financial problems, they can always approach the central bank, okay, as it is the leader of the money market, the leader of the banking system. The central bank will not refuse to accommodate any commercial bank which is in financial crisis. Okay? Speaking about the importance of this function, Professor Richard says, R says in his modern banking says, okay, the lender of the last resort function is sine qua non or the fundamental to good central banking. Professor Geoffrey Kautha from Great Britain, okay, in his book An Outline of Money mentions that there is one function, okay, which central banks perform in every country, which is at times the most important of all. The central bank is the lender of the last resort. So Kautha regards the function of lender of the last resort as the most important function of central banking. Okay? Then comes the next carrying out the monetary policy, okay, or controller of credit. By far, this is the most important function of central bank in modern times because the bank money forms a lion's share to the total supply of money and credit in the economy, okay, influencing okay, output, employment, price and income in the economy. And so controlling credit is very, very important. Okay? According to Dr. Beacock, a famous central banker from South Africa, okay, the credit control is a function which embraces the most important questions of central banking policy and practically okay, uh, in, uh, uniting all other functions and made to serve a common purpose. So Beacock regards the function of you know, controller of credit or carrying out monetary policy as the most important function of central banking. And I also firmly believe that this is the most important function because the credit created by the banking system can have profound influence on the production, employment, income, and the price of an economy. So, you know, credit control is one of the most important functions, and I can say it's the most important function of the central bank in modern times. Central bank uses two types of weapons, okay, or instruments to control the volume of credit created by the banking system. So the central bank uses two types of weapons or instruments to control the volume of credit, the availability, the supply, the cost, and you know, the volume of credit created by the banking system. Because credit money forms, you know, more than 80% of the supply of credit, uh, total supply of money in every economy. So the central bank uses the quantitative instruments and the qualitative instruments. The quantitative instruments are those instruments or weapons which influence the, you know, quantity of credit created by the banking system. Okay. The central bank mainly uses three major types of quantitative weapons or instruments to control credit. Okay. One is discount rate. When commercial banks need financial assistance, they can approach the central bank with the, you know, valuable collateral securities. The central bank will discount that. The rate of interest charged by the central bank is lending to the money, lending to the commercial banks. By discounting, okay, the bills is called, you know, discount rate or the bank rate, okay, which is one of the very powerful weapons used by central bank to control the volume, okay, the cost and the availability of credit. Secondly, the central bank uses open market operations, open market purchase and sale of securities when the country is facing inflation, okay, hyperinflation, rapidly increasing price level, the central bank will, okay, you know, sell the securities in the open market. The people who buy the securities are okay, financial institutions like banks. So the money will be flowing back from commercial banks to central bank and there will be a multiple contraction of bank credit. Conversely, when the economy is in recession or in depression or deflation, okay, the central bank will Try to buy securities from the open market. By buying securities from the financial institutions, central bank will pump in more money in the hands of the people. Okay, more money in circulation means okay, there will be there will be multiple expansion of bank credit. Okay, expansion of employment, investment, income, output, and the rising price level. The economy can come out of deflation or deflation trends. Then the central bank also uses another instrument called required reserve ratio or cash reserve ratio. That is the percentage of cash. Every commercial bank has to keep with the central bank, okay, according to the law of the country. Okay, when there is inflation in the country and prices are rising continuously, central bank will increase the required reserve ratio of commercial banks. So that commercial banks have to give away an increased percentage of their total deposits in the central bank as ready cash, and they can lend only limited amount to the general public. When there is a recession or depression, the central bank will decrease the cash reserve ratio or required reserve ratio. So the commercial banks will get to the okay excess reserves. And there will be multiple expansion of bank credit, and there will be increasing money supply means, increasing investment, increasing employment, increasing production, and increasing the price of the economy can come out of deflation. Okay. Then the central bank uses also qualitative instruments like you know 
advising the commercial banks not to give loans to unscrupulous people, giving wide publicity, okay, direct action, and cancelling the license of commercial banks who are defaulting. So many varieties of quality instruments which influence the quality of credit. Okay, only for you know unscrupulous people credit should not be given and thrifty as well as you know uh, investors with credit worthiness, investors with uh, moral values will be encouraged by the central bank asking commercial banks to give them more credit. Okay, by using qualitative instruments to influence the quality of credit. So the credit control policy of the central bank or the monetary policy of the central bank is the most important function of the central bank. Modern banks. The next function of the central bank is okay. Bank of Central Clearance, Settlement and Transfer. You know, commercial banks can set their financial transactions with the help of central bank. Okay, they can clear the checks of you know each other at the Bank of Federal in Britain or the Federal System in the USA. Okay, so banks and the central bank acts as the Bank of Central Clearance, Settlement and Transfer of funds between you know commercial banks and other financial institutions. Jansi regards the clearing function as the most important function of central banking. Okay, then comes custodian of the nations. Reserves of international currency. You know, every country has lots of gold and foreign currency reserves like dollar deposits, euro currencies, yen, okay, pound sterling, and all that. The central bank is the custodian of the okay, nation's reserves of international currency as well as gold and silver and everything because it has the power to you know, control and regulate okay, the foreign currency reserves of the country for the national economic interest and the general welfare of the society. Okay, again, to keep maintain the value of the currency stable, then custodian of the Cash resources of commercial banks. Commercial banks' cash resources are also safely kept to the central bank so that you know the financial system of the country will be stable, reliable, and dependable. Then again, the central bank also manages the national debt, nation's debt, okay, consists of borrowed, borrowing from other countries by the central government. All these things are completely managed by the central bank in modern times. Central bank also pro uh, provides you know, lots of developmental functions, okay, encourage you know commercial banks to give agricultural loans and industrial loans. And loans to the okay, ailing industry so that there can be rapid economic development and for the regional development of the country also. Central bank encourages commercial banks to give loans to the you know organizations which are set up in backward areas or less developed areas in that way. You know, balance with the development can be achieved. So central bank performs a variety of functions in modern times. Okay. Because of these manifold functions, we can say central bank is one of the most important financial institutions and it is the topmost or the undisputed. When, uh, later of the money market and capital market in every country and central bank is inevitable for the functioning of an economy and the smooth functioning of the banking system because a country without a central bank at the top is like a human body without a head. Okay, no country in the world today has, you know, has, uh, can afford to lose a central bank. Every country in the world has a central bank and it's the topmost of the apex financial institution okay, in the country and it regulates, controls and manages the activities of other financial institutions and help the government to tide over difficulties by acting as a banker, agent, and advisor, and it is the topmost and the you know, you know, it was the apex financial institution that operates in every country. Let us now make a small distinction or differences between central bank and commercial banks. First, we shall just you know compare the similarities between central bank and commercial banks. Both central bank and commercial banks are financial institutions; they deal in okay money. Number two. Both central bank and commercial banks, you know, give short-term loans. Okay, they do not give long-term loans; they give only short-term loans. And thirdly, both of them create credit. And also, you know, the both central bank and commercial banks are only, you know, ready to accept only government securities or you know collateral securities, not immobile securities for giving loans advances. These are the four similarities. I repeat, both central bank and commercial banks are, you know, financial institutions. They deal in money. Okay, both central bank and commercial banks create credit. Both central bank and commercial banks give only short term okay loans to the you know and uh, organization the, the organizations or the people or the government, and then they do not accept you know immobile properties. They accept only collateral securities like government securities and first class securities for giving loans. So the for similarities, there are so many differences between a central bank and a commercial bank. The central bank is the topmost financial institution in the country, whereas the commercial bank is only just a constant unit. Okay, number two, okay, a central bank has the monopoly power of issuing currency notes in every country. That power the commercial bank does not have. Thirdly, the central bank acts as the lender of the last resort. Okay, that facility can be provided only by central bank and commercial banks have no such facility. Okay, number four, the central bank acts as the okay banker, financial advisor, and the agent to the central government. The commercial bank does not have that facility or that privilege or that 
power. Again, the central bank is the custodian of the nation's reserves of international currency, gold and silver and everything, but as a commercial bank doesn't have such power, they also deal in foreign exchanges, but they cannot regulate or control okay, the nation's reserves of international currency or gold or silver. Then again, a central bank is also able to carry out the monetary policy, it can control the credit created by the banking system by using both quantitative and qualitative instruments of okay, monetary policy, whereas commercial banks do not have such powers. Again, a central bank is the leader of the money, being the leader of the money market, the central bank functions for the national economic interest, for the general for the society and the national as a whole, whereas commercial banks are profit making financial institutions, okay, they are just like a constant unit of the banking system. Again, Okay, a central bank only functions for the national economic interest, whereas commercial banks aim to maximize profit for their shareholders. Okay, again, you know, in most of the countries, okay, commercial banks are privately owned, but in some countries like India, when most of the commercial banks are nationalized and under the government control, whereas central bank everywhere and all over the world is under the government control. Central banks are state owned, whereas commercial banks in many countries are, okay, privately owned. In some countries, it is also state owned. Okay? These are the difference between central bank and commercial banks. Dear students, so I have taught you most of the important topics under the subject money and banking. Please thoroughly study the notes. Okay? Okay, already Professor Anil has sent you the notes. Thoroughly prepare the notes. There will be, you know, 60% uh, marks for the return examinations and 40% for 30% uh, for multiple choice tests and 10% for class participation. Okay? Because the uh, COVID-19, you know, coronavirus pandemic, okay, the class participation bars, you don't worry, will help you. Even the written examination also, so don't get scared. Write, write as best as you can, okay, the information, everything is there in the notes. Write, 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 write the answers on, in your own words. And the multiple choice test, you circle the most appropriate answer and it will be marked out of 30, okay. Two multiple choice tests, 20 marks each, I am sorry, 15 marks each, 20 questions. Each question is carrying 0 0.75 marks. So, 40 questions altogether for 30 marks. So, okay, answer those questions also by circling the correct answers and send them to us, okay, whenever it's required. Go ahead, don't get scared. The only thing that you have to fear is the fear of yourself. We are there to support you. Do well. All the very best for the examination.